So I think when you're very closed minded at times on one opportunity or one way to do something, you close off this whole world of opportunities that could be like the perfect fit for you and you just wouldn't know. Welcome to the Game of Her Own podcast, a podcast about women who work in sports. I'm your host, Jahan Blake. After 15 years of working for three major league teams, including the Boston Red Sox, Los Angeles Dodgers, and the Chicago Cubs, I discovered the one thing I loved the most was helping women in sports shatter glass ceilings and take their seat at the table. I loved it so much that I made a business out of it. I have the honor of coaching high performing women in the sports and entertainment industry and supporting them as they go after exactly what they want in their career. So if you are feeling tired of waiting on the sidelines, done being overlooked for promotions, and you're ready to pull ahead of the pack and take your career to the next level, girl, I'm here for it. I also created the Game of Her Own podcast to support you as well. We are here to share the stories of incredible women who work in sports and entertainment. These leaders and trailblazers will inspire you with their success and the lessons they've learned along the way to the top. Ladies, there is nothing like women empowering women. I am so honored you're here. Y'all are in for a treat today. Hollis Brown is a powerhouse and all I can say is watch out world. I am so grateful I got to sit down and spend some time with Hollis. Not gonna lie, I started the week off in a bit of a funk and I was functioning, but I didn't realize I needed to hear some inspirational words and Hollis said all of the things I needed to hear, all of what I consider to be just the right things. You are going to love this episode. I'm telling you, you're going to feel lifted, inspired. I had endorphins after finishing and wrapping the episode with Hollis. Y'all, Hollis Brown is the coordinator of partner strategy and management for the Milwaukee Bucks. She is also the newly crowned Miss Wisconsin USA. She talks all about the pageantry world. She talks all about the sports world and how she combines the two. And she talks about how she sets boundaries in her life. I know some of us struggle with setting boundaries because we are ambitious and we want to put our best foot forward at work, but we also want to be mindful of the time that we spend away from work, actually living a life that doesn't have to do with work. You guys, I'm just going to jump right in. I'm not going to talk anymore. I want you to hear everything that Hollis has to say. Don't miss a minute of it. All right, Game of Our Own listeners, let's do this. Hollis, I am so excited for this interview. I never do interviews in the evening and I'm like over the top <laughs> excited for this one. Welcome to the Game of Her Own podcast. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. I am super excited. Even before when you were on our podcast, Outnumbered, I was like, I can't wait until there's a moment, especially your big news in my life where I can come on and share my story with yours. Yes, your story is going to be so good. There's just, there's so much. But before we even get there, take us back in time and tell us when you first fell in love with sports. Ooh, okay. So my journey in sports is a little different than a lot of people. So even though I am 5'10", I actually never played sports a day in my life. People always ask me if I played basketball. No, if you give me a basketball, you will understand why I never played basketball. That was not for me. But for college, I actually went to a D1 university. So I went to Virginia Tech and you're kind of surrounded by sports when you're at a D1 school. And even then, I don't think it really clicked for me. So what finally made me fall in love with sports? I would say that I more so fell in love with the business of sports than actually sports itself with being at the school. And so I was a marketing major. And you know, when you're in that phase of trying to figure out what industry you want to work in or like what jobs are out there, I knew I wanted to be in something fun and something that excited me and then something that I can kind of grow and there's lots of opportunity. And so from having that kind of mindset and just going to basketball games and like looking on the sidelines of people working, I was like, hey, this looks like it could be a fun job, a cool job. I wonder how I can get involved with that. And then so from there, I told my academic advisor that, you know, I think I want to look into different opportunities in sports. I'd love to learn more. And then, of course, you know, you always get the questions of, well, do you have a passion for sports? Like, do you follow any teams? And I was just like, nope. I just think it'd be a really fun job, a really cool job. And so from there, I got connected with our athletics marketing department because they always had an internship 
and just being able to express my interest there. I expressed it to them. I want to say going into my junior year and I interviewed for the internship, didn't get it. And then so going into my senior year, I went on the Forbes list. And at the time, I think they still do, but they had the list of top sports agencies within the industry. And so I applied to every single internship that was on that list. And there were a hundred companies. So that took me a very long time. But from there, I actually got an interview from two of the companies. And then I actually got a job offer from one, which was Wasserman. And then so I got to go out to California for the summer and turn with Wasserman got kind of like thrown into the business of sports from one of the leading sports agencies. And I would say that at that time, that's when I was like, okay, this is definitely the industry for me. This is where I see myself because there's just so many elements. You know, you can work with players, you can work with brands, you can work with sports properties. So from that moment, I would say that's when I fell in love with the world of sports business. I am sorry. Did you just tell us that you applied for a hundred different opportunities from the Forbes list? Yep. That is what I'm saying. And looking back, I was like, you go, bro, because I don't know if I would do that now. Probably, you know, when you want something bad enough. But at that time, I was like, you know, I'm going to get this experience. So that way, when I go back to the athletics marketing internship, I was like, I need to make it so that way they can't tell me no. Because who else is walking in with the Wasserman intern? At that time, nobody. Wow. So you applied for a hundred internships. Wow. And you heard back from two companies from two. Mm-hmm. and you got an offer from, from one. one. Yep. So that tells you all you need to know about your odds in applying. I feel like, Ooh, I mean, how, what did that do to your mindset? So I think for my mindset at the time, I didn't realize that applying to a 100 internships was a lot because of how competitive of an industry it was. So especially, and I didn't have much experience, if any, coming into it. And so in my mind, and my mom always tells me that when you're applying to jobs or internships, it's a numbers game. So the more you can do, the greater your odds are. And I think when I finally got the call from Wasserman, I didn't even think about all the time that I spent applying to all those internships. I was like, girl, you're going to California. None of that (laughs) even matters. So At the moment, I think I was just grateful for the one opportunity that just happened to be my opportunity. I love, love, love that outlook. If I'm hearing you correctly, too, it was almost like you didn't know what you didn't know. Am I I getting that right? Like you were just like, whatever, I think working in sports business would be great. So that's what I'm going to do. And you didn't have that thought, like whatever people put in your head, you didn't have that narrative. Right. Oh, it's so hard to get a job, a job in sports. Mm-hmm. Like, it, yeah, like what's your plan B? Like you didn't have any of that in your, yeah. like no one was saying that to you. Mm-hmm. Correct. In my mind, everybody applied for a hundred plus internships to get the one that they wanted. So I was yeah. like, you know what? This is what you do. I mean, what a great internship. So you moved from what, George, no, Virginia Tech, Virginia, so you Virginia Tech. So you moved yep. from Virginia to LA, the Carlsbad, right? California. <gasps> Even better. Even yeah. better. I was in Carlsbad for the summer, living my best life. I traveled before that internship, but I think that was the first time that I was actually in California. And it was the first time that I was somewhere for such a long period of time because I was there for the entire summer. So that was what, maybe two and a half, three months where I'm just out here going to my little Wasserman job, hanging out at the beach. I didn't have any friends. So trying to like make friends in a grocery store or talk to people. Honestly, most of the time I did stay in like my Airbnb and watch Netflix. But for the most part, I had that best experience. All right. So you had a great internship started out. I mean, you worked at uh, Virginia Tech as well, correct? Like you worked in there that started your sort of love for all of this. Yeah. Yeah. Once I came back from that internship, I ended up getting that athletic marketing internship that I mentioned Mm. before for my senior Mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny because I wanted that internship so bad, but when I actually got it, it turned out not to be what I was hoping for it to be. And it was a lot of, I think when you have that internship, their whole mindset was they wanted you to build on it and like come back every year. And when you come back every year, they'll give you more and more responsibilities. But at that point I was in my senior year. So I was like, I understand the importance of throwing out t-shirts, but I want to be in the meetings where we're talking about the marketing strategy. Like I want to be in the meetings where I'm able to lead the marketing signage for baseball or basketball. So I was like, I get that since this is my first year, I technically have to start at the bottom, but in the hindsight, 
this is my senior year. This is my last year. So I feel like uh-huh. I should have been a little more upwards. And so I articulated that. I'm very much a person that is going to articulate to whoever is willing to listen my dream goals. And so I told someone that I really wanted to work specifically with a sporting team that we had, whether it was baseball, basketball, football. However, I can work directly with the team and help in any way that I can. And then fast forward, a position in the basketball team opened up. I think it was like basketball analytics or insights, something that I had no idea what it was, but I applied anyway, because I was like, if this is what I want, you'll figure it out. You'll learn it. It's fine. And so I interviewed for the position. And then during the interview, the person goes, you know, we're starting this interview process, but the position wasn't actually approved, but we're hoping that it gets approved. And we want to be able to like insert this person in quickly. And so I was like, okay, you know, they were pretty confident. I was like, you know, the position will get approved. We'll just wait for that call. And then, so I think maybe like a week later, I got a call and they said the position was actually not approved and they were not going to move forward with that. But they liked me so much in my energy that they wanted to bring me in as an office assistant and work that way. And so I was like, absolutely, I'll come in. And that was honestly the best decision I made. I'm still um, have a relationship with some of the coaching staff that was there and even just being able to work with players and some of the philanthropic (laughs) events that they had going on. But it was just kind of cool to see how to run a collegiate basketball operation. So you applied for a job and your thought was, I don't know anything about basketball analytics, but I'll learn. That was your attitude. Yeah, that was my attitude. Yes. What, where does that come from? Because I want everyone to be like that. Like, I'll learn. I'll figure it out. <laughs> like, I know them smart enough. Like, there's where is that confidence coming from? I would probably say my mom. She has always instilled in me, if you want something bad enough, go for it. Like, what is the only thing that can really hold you back from an opportunity is yourself. And even when you get into an opportunity, you're going to have to learn it anyway. And so always just walking through the door. And I think especially when I was in college or even now, because I always say in my interviews when people are like, what's the best quality about you? And I always say that I'm a sponge. And I genuinely believe that. Like, I really just want to soak in everything that I can because Because one, you never know where life is going to lead you. When I was in college, I didn't know I wanted to work in corporate partnerships for an NBA team. I knew I wanted to work in marketing, but I didn't know exactly where that avenue would lead me. So I think when you're very close minded at times on one opportunity or one way to do something, you close off this whole world of opportunities that could be like the perfect fit for you and you just wouldn't know. Yeah. All right. Tell everybody, I I love that advice. Tell everybody what you do now and who you do it for. Yes. So I work as a coordinator of partner strategy and management for the Milwaukee Bucks. Well, the 2021 NBA champions, the Milwaukee Bucks, I can throw that in there now because I am a champion, but On my day-to-day, I work with a lot of our corporate partners, so integrating them into basically the Bucks operation. And so some of the partners that I'm able to work with is Pfizer, who is the naming rights partner of Mm -hmm. Pfizer Forum. So that is a very big account that I'm super excited to work on. But some of the others I get to work on is BMO, which is one of our official bank sponsors. And then also SC Johnson, Gatorade, um, Jewelers Mutual, and a few others. So I really, really absolutely love my job. Oh, how, all right. So you started the podcast outnumbered you and your co-host Kelly and tell everybody what, how that podcast came to be, why you created it. Yeah. So I started a podcast, Kelly and I started it together because fun fact, Kelly and I actually went to Virginia Tech together and we graduated together and both of our last names began with B. So even in marketing at graduation, we stood next to each other, but we weren't actually friends. We never really talked often. And so fast forward, maybe two years after graduation, we both ended up getting jobs at ESPN and our desks were like right beside each other. So I always say clearly God really wanted us to be friends because he put us beside each other so many times and we were not picking up the signs until we got to ESPN. <laughs> and so while we were at ESPN, especially just look, sitting at our desk and looking around, because of course, we're going to have all the TVs up and then um, just looking at the different analysts that were on television or even just looking at the, our, some of our coworkers that we were working with, we noticed that it was just a lot of men. Sometimes it was all men. And so at the time I looked at her and I was like, why don't we start a podcast? talking about this, sharing our journey in sports and just helping other women. And so it's kind of 
blossomed into something super, super amazing. And I'm super glad that even now when people listen, they'll message me and they'll say how much it's helped them. Because you know, when you create a podcast, you hope people listen, but at the end of the day, you really make it for yourself. And even if you help one person, that's great. But when you find out you're helping like 20, 30, 100 people, you're like, oh my goodness, y'all really listen and like resonate with what I'm putting out. And that's super cool. But we ultimately wanted to make the podcast again of just sharing our journey in sports. And at the time when we were at ESPN, we were just kind of contract workers. And so we wanted to share the journey into a full time position and kind of what that looked like. And we always say we're making a mistake so you don't have to. So like if we did something in our journey that did not work, then please do not apply it to your journey. Do something else. Do it another way. But if we did something in our journey that did work, then please apply it to it because we ultimately want other women to get into these jobs a lot quicker Mm -hmm. rather than, you know, sometimes when you graduate from college, you're working a few internships or you're working contract jobs. But a lot of the men, unfortunately, for us, they're getting right into those coordinator positions or they're getting right into those manager positions. So we just want to educate women on how they can become the absolute strongest candidate in any organization and the opportunity that they want to do. And however, we can kind of share that information. That was beautifully said. So (laughs) now, okay, so you have outnumbered. Mm -hmm. And you started it while you were at ESPN. Mm -hmm. You finished ESPN. Let's see. Let's look at my notes somewhere. May 2020, which was a hard time to finish a job. And that was right at the height of COVID. And then you, so you have your podcast, you guys are working, you guys have a great story to tell of what you did between jobs, but tell everybody how you kept your, because you appear like, very confident. You come off. I'm sure people who are listening are like, Ooh, like what, like, what is her secret sauce? What is going on? She's got to tell me, but like, how did you keep that positivity up during such a difficult time until you got to where you are now with the books? Let me say that with the books. There's a few ways I think of how I kept the positivity. One, I'm very big on self-care. And so if I ever feel overwhelmed or I know I need a moment or if I need to unplug, I will take that time. I am very big. Even my coworkers now, they'll say um, I work nine to five because that is what we have. And at five o'clock, there's nothing against you, but I'm off because I need to be able to take that time to rejuvenate myself. So that way I can come back the next day and give 110%. I don't really like to work all those late hours or even after the fact, if I don't have to, sometimes it is necessary. So I'm not saying if you have work to do, don't just clock out because it's five. That's not what I'm saying at all. But when you make that a habit of working 9 a.m. to maybe 10 p.m. or when you're consistently doing that, like you, I'm sure you see on Instagram or social media, burnout is a thing. So you have to be very conscious of when you're going to check out or when you're taking that time of self-care. So that's number one. And number two, I always believe in myself because I know it's possible. I always say I am my biggest fan, but I can also be my biggest downfall. So if something doesn't happen the way I picture it, it's because I did something or I didn't give it my all. And so I think it always just comes back to myself and knowing that you have to be disciplined. You have to be willing to put in the work. And then you also have to get creative. During COVID, when I did lose my job, unfortunately, it was ESPN because at the time, no events were going on. So therefore, there wasn't really a need for me to be an event assistant with them. And so having different outlets like my podcast and being able to pour into that during um, kind of the time uncertainty, I think that gave me a lot of hopefulness and kind of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel because I was talking to so many women and I was just learning more about the industry. So I would say if things aren't going exactly the way that you hope for it to be, kind of see what you can do on the back end to better yourself. So that way, when an opportunity does come, like when I got the call from the butts, I was ready because I didn't take those moments of stillness to actually sit still. I was consistently working on myself during that time. Ooh, I mean, there's so many good quotes here. Like, I don't even know what to, I don't, I don't even have any more room to write. Like that, I, I lo- that's fantastic, fantastic advice. All right. So I'm reading your bio mm-hmm. and I'm like blown away. And I already knew you. I thought I did. And then I was like reading this and preparing. I'm like going, oh my goodness. Like, I don't know if I knew you were 26, but I know now. And I'm looking at all like your bio reads beautifully. Everybody, it's linked in the show notes, her bio. Also, um, the podcast outnumbered is linked in the show notes. So go check that out for sure. Oh, yay. But I'm looking at all of the 
honors and awards that you've won. So just to name a few, 2021 Creators of Color, uh, an NBA Future Sales Star, award recipient for the National Coalition of 100 Black Women. And the, I mean, the list goes on. So tell us, like, I like to keep it real on this podcast. Mm-hmm. And I think what everybody sees on, we put our best fo- foot forward on social media, as we mm-hmm. should, right? And LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever, TikTok, which I do not exist in that world, but wherever, everyone puts <laughs> either, their best. But I want to so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, but I'm going to need like an extra day in the week if I'm going to put that on my plate. But like, there's so much out there and we all put our best foot forward. So when you read this bio and we even get to the big thing that just happened, like, I know you're confident, but was there ever moments of self-doubt or imposter syndrome? All the time, all the time. I'm not going to say all the time, but it does happen very often. And I think one thing that really helps me is being transparent about it. And so, of course, I have my very, very close group of people where I have my best friends, my boyfriend, my family, mom and dad, all of those people. And so when I do need those moments of like encouragement or extra boost, I will tell them, hey, I need a moment because I, I don't know, I don't not to say that I don't feel like I deserve to be in spaces because I absolutely think I do. But sometimes you're just like, wow, is this really happening? Like, is it right on time? Or I know um, maybe this one thing I did was great. But when you look at your encompassing person, you're like, oh, do I really deserve this? Or was I fully transparent? But I think looking at the picture overall, you're exactly where you need to be. And so God is probably giving you that award because he wants to remind you of how bomb and fabulous you are. Or he's giving you that award because he needs to remind you and show you your potential because maybe you lost sight of that and you need to be reminded. Or three, he's giving you that award because he knows that you're ready for the next level and he wants you to be in that space with like-minded people that are going to level you up. And so I think having that mindset of, I'm in this space for a reason and I need to be able to kind of soak it all in is how I try to remain confident. And of course, just talking to my friends and stuff, and they, they will always remind me (laughs) how great I am or how great I'm doing, which is nice. But I think just being able to kind of soak in those moments and always remember that you are there for a reason. And the transparency part too, with your, those closest to you. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm I'm feeling down. I'm feeling insert word here and I need a little help. Like mm-hmm. you're not afraid to show both sides of yourself to your inner circle. Is that right? Right at all. And I feel like you can't be afraid to show who you really are because at the same time, if you're not being able to articulate what you need in that moment, how people are going to know that that's what you need. And so it's so funny because even I'm sharing meetings when at the end people will say, do you have any questions? Or like, they'll say, Hollis, do you have questions? And sometimes I don't like when they do that because for me, it's like, I, I know how to articulate when I need something. So it's like, if I have a question, mm-hmm. I promise you, I will ask, you don't have to call me out on, you know, anything. I will tell you when I'm not feeling okay. And even if I don't tell you, I'm not great at hiding my emotions. So my energy will tell you when I'm not feeling okay. And I think that's important as well. Um, I'm not great at hiding things. So for me, it's better to articulate when I'm not feeling my best and being able to take a step back or when I'm not feeling as confident, creating a playlist, which has been absolutely amazing. But then, like I said, having that core group of people where they're like, girl, you are taking a moment. I'm gonna let you have your moment, but you need to get out there and stretch yourself because you are bomb and you deserve to be here. Hey, Jahan here. I hope you're enjoying the interview. I am sure you are thinking about your own career right now and how you can pull out in front of the pack to take your career to the next level. For 18 years, supporting women in sports has been my favorite part of my career, and I would love to support you. Whether it's joining my free Game of Her Own community or one of my one-on-one coaching programs, I am here for you. Send me a message at jblake at jahanblake.com or DM me on Instagram at jahanblake. And let's schedule a time to have a free session. I cannot wait to hear from you. All right, let's get back to why you're here. What do you do at work? So are you that transparent with, say, your manager or allies at work? I am. 
I am very transparent. Um, whenever I'm feeling overwhelmed or whenever I need a moment, I try to be as transparent. And especially now, um, or in my most recent job, because I got in, I was started with the bugs in sales, and then I got into partner strategy and management. I want to say around November, so right around the middle of the season. And at that time, things are rolling, so you just got to catch on and move with it and kind of learn along the way. And so even now, I had a meeting with some of my managers, and they were like sometimes we forget that you know you just joined the team because you just catch on and you just go with it and you kind of have to remind yourself that you got to take a step back and ask those questions and familiarize yourself with the platform especially now that we're in the off season that I have the time to like really understand each partner and the people that are managing these partnerships and kind of the strategy and what's in the contract but overall when I do have those moments of feeling overwhelmed or uncertainty I'm very transparent with my manager I'm also very transparent on how I like to work. I am the type of person that I like to at least try it for myself first and either I'll figure it out. It may take me a little longer, but at the same time, I'm figuring it out. Whereas if you're just showing it to me, I promise you, I'm probably going to forget it either tomorrow. I'm going to forget it by next week. And so so for me, I like to try it out myself, see if I you know, can figure it out or if I fall flat on my face and have questions. Either way, and my manager is super understanding about that. She really knows how to like give me a moment to figure things out, to figure myself out, especially with this being a new position. And if I'm feeling overwhelmed, she's been super, super supportive. So I am very transparent as work. So, all right. So transparency is working for you. You have a manager who receives it well Mm -hmm. and knows how to to lead. Mm -hmm. And then let's go back to the nine to five. And a lot of people are probably listening like, wait, you only work nine to five, obviously when you need to work later or teams in town, whatever, that's different, but like right. you try to manage it. And it sounds like you set boundaries early on. Was that easy to do coming in to an organization after not working for, let's call it a, a year, right? A year? Yeah. yeah. It was a little over a year. So not working for over a year, getting a job, super competitive. Were you mm-hmm. nervous about setting that boundary right out the gate? Honestly, I wasn't. And I say I wasn't because I'm fully, (laughs) I feel like transparent is going to be the key word throughout this whole podcast. Throughout the interview process for the role that I have now, I was very transparent about the podcast that I do on the side, Outnumbered. I was very transparent about my hobbies of being like pageantry and all of this stuff. So I think for me, fully understanding that Hollis the brand and Hollis the person is also important. And I have to be able to invest in that as much as I'm investing into Hollis in the corporation. And so I think so many people, and at least I try not to, but so many people really get lost in their job and they lose sight of who they are as the person because they don't have, you know, a lot of passion. Well, I'm not going to say they don't have passions, but they don't take the time to really invest in those passions or really explore those passion and interests because they're spending so much time at their job. And I think one thing that COVID really showed me or introduced to me is that you really have to take care of who you are as a person because these jobs, they will they will do whatever they need to. And I mean, at the end of the day, as long as I'm getting my job done, I don't see a problem with being able to be a little bit flexible in that hours, especially if I'm doing the nine to five. And again, if you do need to stay later or have those weekends, because I do work for an NBA team. So we do have evening games. We do have weekends. So I am working a lot. But on those days where I can leave the office at five or I can kind of be a little more lenient with that schedule, then I'm going to kind of pour into my own personal stuff. Because I think one other thing is people look at it as, okay, I work my nine to five and then what do you do? But for me, since I am focusing on Hollis, the pageant queen and Hollis, the brand, it's like, yes, I'm working from nine to five, but then that means from 5.30 to 10, I'm working on outnumbered, or that means from 5.30 to 9, I'm working on this thing for my pageant. So it's not like after work, I have all this free time. Most of the time I am booked with Hollis, the person. And so I think that's another thing too, that allows me to create those boundaries because I'm not just kind of filling it with watching Netflix or just kind of walking my dog, mm-hmm. although I do those things as well. Oftentimes, I my schedule is booked with different interviews or just figuring out. I create meetings for myself for the podcast, even though it's just me and Kelly. And so having yourself on a schedule, I think that's been very really helpful. Yeah, you have to. Yes. You have to. Let's get into the pageantry, like the whole pageant world. I am <laughs> so excited 
congratulations, Miss Wisconsin, USA, 2022. Like that, I wish I had sound effects on my podcast. Like that would need sound effects, like applause, but like, that's incredible. So congratulations. Tell everybody all about that. Like, I don't think I've ever, I think I've met one Miss insert state here, like in my entire <laughs> life, right? Like I just, I just don't like now you're and you work in sports. So I was like, Oh, we I have to interview her. Like, I want to hear everything. Yeah. So like, what was that like and winning and entering and I'll stop talking because I'm blabbing. So I'm so excited. Go. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it has been absolutely amazing. Like, I don't even think I have the words to describe what this month, because I've only been a month in, I got crowned maybe May 8th. I think that was the exact date. So a little over a month. And it's just been everything that I thought it would be and more. And so I actually did my, I competed in my first pageant, my sophomore year of college. And I competed for the Miss Theta Iota Black and Gold pageant for Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. And I ended up winning that pageant. And from there, I was like, oh, you know, this is pretty cool. I think I didn't know too much about pageants then. I didn't realize that there was like Miss USA and Miss America and you can kind of keep going. But I knew that experience. And then I was like slowly started learning and watching more, but still didn't do it. And then once I graduated from college, I was like, you know what? I think it's time to kind of like dip my toe back into this pageant thing a little bit more, see what's out there. And that's when um, I was crowned the Miss Black Virginia USA since I was still in Virginia at Virginia Tech. And I was able to go to the Miss Black USA pageant where I scored or I placed top five. Yes, I placed top five in that pageant. And I was blown away because I didn't have any prep. Oftentimes, like these girls have coaches and they prep for months. I literally just showed up with what I had in my closet and just kind of like talked. I didn't really do any prep or research going into that. So from there, I was like, you know what? If you can get top five without really prepping, imagine what you can do with the right coaches behind you, like pouring into you and really helping you throughout this thing. And so from there, I went back, I called um, the person that was over the pageant during when I was in college. His name is Darius. And he's actually one of my really good friends and coaches now. So he's literally seen my growth from sophomore year in college to now being Miss Wisconsin USA. But from there, um, just kind of really learning the pageant system in the pageant world and seeing how, you know, I can be a part of that. So I did Miss North Carolina USA last year and I got top 10. And so from there, I was like, you know what, let's Let's try it again. Let's see where you go. And I even told my family, because I think for Miss USA, the age cutoff is 28. And so I was like, you know, we're going to keep doing it either until you win or till you age out. So I was like, (laughs) I hope you guys are ready because this is it. This is our life for the next four years. So (laughs) let's hop on board. But fortunately this year, I won Miss Wisconsin USA. And so now I get to go compete at Miss USA in the fall. What? I mean, what was that like? Were you ever, aff- I, I know the answer, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> Were you afraid or nervous about showing that side of yourself to your colleagues? Ooh, yes. Very, very much so. And I think it's something that I'm still opening up to or getting comfortable with because oftentimes, especially with the negative connotation that pageants get sometimes, even though we are very educated, strong women that are pursuing our goals, because when you look at it too, pageant queens are often doctors, lawyers, nurses, like these are very, very educated women, entrepreneurs. And still oftentimes people look at pageant queens as like ditzy or not smart, or you're just getting up there twirling around because they don't know what they're talking about. And oftentimes, you know, especially being in a pageant, And I didn't want that kind of thought to follow me rather than looking at it as like, oh, Hollis, you could be the person that breaks that thought and that breaks the mold. And now I'm slowly starting to see that. But even with my job now with the Milwaukee Bucks, they have been so, so supportive. And I absolutely love it because oftentimes I try to keep, like I mentioned earlier, Hollis, the person in the brand separate from Hollis and corporate, but they have truly embraced this journey. Like they were asking questions. They've been completely involved, especially once I came out 
now, even now they're like, so when is Miss USA going to be? How can we help? And I'll never forget. And it almost made me cry. I'm so glad I didn't because I have the ugliest like Kim Kardashian cry. <laughs> but when I was coming out of one of my meetings right before I left to compete at Miss Wisconsin USA, all of my department, they had on shirts that say Go Hollis, Miss Wisconsin USA 2022. And so when I came out of the meeting, yes, and they all had like these, do you remember at Burger King how they have like the- yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, they all got those. And so they had on like these Burger, they weren't actually Burger King, but they had on like these Burger King folded crowns with the t-shirt. And when I came out, they just started copying. And I was just so overwhelmed by the support because, you know, oftentimes too, when you do have like a life outside of work, sometimes not everybody, but sometimes it can be like, oh, well, you're doing that. You're not really focusing on your job where I didn't want, you know, those thoughts as well of when people are like, oh, you're spending too much time, even though it's your off time, they can still be like, "Mm, you don't seem to be as focused or as invested in this company. And so Mm -hmm. I didn't want that to happen either. But the fact that they've just completely like like embraced and support this opportunity. Uh, I love it here. <laughs> yes. Yes. Go, I mean, go you and go box. Like way to be it's just so mm-hmm. inclusive. So it, the way you talk about it and like people can't see your face, but like, you're like, you were shining, right. And telling yeah. that story. And like, you just like, you're beaming when you're telling it and you just seem genuinely happy mm-hmm. with, who you're working for and who's leading you right now in your department. Like that's a, that's a good feeling. It is. It is. Cause I've worked for jobs where I wasn't happy. I've worked for bosses where I wasn't happy. I've worked for companies where the culture, I was not happy. And so to be in an organization like the Bucks, I've seen every end of the spectrum and I cannot rave anymore or any higher about the organization. Like what you see online where they're very forward speaking on racial equity and like diversity and inclusion and even just like mental health and awareness, they not only just preach it, but like they definitely practice what they preach. They walk the walk, they talk the talk. And so you can feel that, especially as an employee. That's great. What a great organization to be a part of. And the team is just doing so well. Right. I mean, it's so fun to watch. So Miss, Miss USA is next. Is that right? Yes. Miss USA. I'm not sure of the date or the location or any of those details. I know it'll be in the fall. So maybe September, October, November, early November. That's kind of the time frame that we have. All right. Are you ready? This seems like a good time to get to the rapid fire questions. You ready? Ooh, rapid fire. Let's go. All right. 12 questions. First thing that comes to mind. Okay. Uh, well, I feel like I know this one. What is your favorite sports moment? The, the NBA championship. That was amazing. Yeah, that was fun to watch. Whoever, I mean, you guys, you need to follow follow Hollis, like yeah. for sure. I think there's outnumbered. There's I'm linked to all these in the show notes. There's your Hollis Brown, right? And then there's also now Miss Wisconsin USA. So yeah. you need to follow all this. But following along, I was like, this is so fun. Like I felt like I was part of the team. I was like, oh my God, I want to cheer for them. Like I yeah. love seeing what's going on. Yes, I try to put everything in my Instagram stories, especially now that we have the highlights. And even every now and then I'll go back and like relive that moment. Like, wow, how much fun did I have last year? (laughs) (laughs) I love it. All right. Number two, what is something people always get wrong about you? Oh, oh, goodness. These are rapid fire, but that one is so slow. (laughs) Okay. I know what they get wrong sometimes. They get wrong that I'm not genuinely happy and like positive all the time when I really am. So like how you've seen all my positive sayings or just my energy on this podcast. That is how I am. Maybe not 24 seven because everybody has like quiet moments or downtime, but that is genuinely how I am all the time. People thought I was faking or it was like a facade for the office. And then when I never turned it off, they were like, oh, you are really like this all the time. And it's like, yep, it's been a year now. <laughs> it wasn't yep. just the interview. This right. is me. <laughs> I am actually happy all the time. <laughs> that is fantastic. What is one food you wouldn't want to give up? Oh, right now I am absolutely obsessed with mac and cheese pizza. And so I think I don't ever want to give that up. How in the world do you eat mac and cheese pizza? <laughs> 
and compete in a pageant. Not that it's all about like the body image, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Yeah, it's the balance. It's, you know, you eat a mac and cheese pizza, but then maybe you have salad later that day. But I will say after I won Miss Wisconsin USA, I did go a little crazy and I may or may not have had mac and cheese pizza every day for like a week. (laughs) And that is not balance, but you know. (laughs) Yeah, that was my reaction. My reaction was based purely on my own personal experience. Like if I had, like, I have no self-control with food. Like, and I, I have no shame about that. It is what it is. I would have done the same thing. Like at my wedding, I was eating bread at the table. Like, give me all the bread now. All right. Are you a morning or a night person? I am a night person, but I'm trying to convert myself to a morning person. All right. Good luck with that. (laughs) (laughs) It hasn't been going well, but we're trying. Favorite holiday? Christmas. What job would you absolutely be horrible at doing? Oh, working for an accounting firm. And I know this because during COVID, I got a job at an accounting firm doing marketing. (laughs) And that's how I know I just wouldn't thrive in any other industry other than sports. (laughs) (laughs) Well, see, now you know. What products would you seriously stockpile if you found out they weren't going to sell it? Does food count? Because (laughs) there is this like, I think it's called true fruit where there's these chocolate covered little raspberries that you keep in the freezer. And I would stockpile them because every time I go to Target, apparently they're a hot commodity. So they're always sold out. So if I could just keep my own personal batch in my freezer, I would do that. Good to know. I'm going to go check those out. Yeah. 10 out of 10. What, (laughs) what is your favorite app? Instagram. If you had to pick Twitter, Facebook, (laughs) Instagram, or LinkedIn. Oh, LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn and LinkedIn loves me. (laughs) (laughs) Y'all make sure you follow her on LinkedIn. If you're not already, we'll link to it in the show notes. All right. A couple more questions. Who is your biggest inspiration in life? My mom. My mom is absolutely my biggest inspiration. Her and Issa Rae. I love me some insecure. Uh, Yeah. A hundred percent. As a child, what did you wish to become when you grew up? Oh, I just knew I was going to become a lawyer. And then once I got to college and realized I'd have to do more years of that, I was like, I'm out. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I cannot see you as a lawyer. Like your spirit is too like, yeah, I can't, I I couldn't, I I could see see that. In my mind, I thought I would be a fun lawyer. Like, (laughs) so, cause I always saw her, how she is an agent. And I was like, oh, you could go that route. But then I was like, did you say Nicole Lynn? I did. Okay. I could, okay. I could do that. I wasn't, I, I was thinking more of like the, again, based on my personal experience, I'm thinking about my sister and corporate. Oh, like litigation lawyer. and like courthouse. Oh, I drive myself crazy. That is <laughs> grueling. Like that really <laughs> like, that is grueling. All right. Finish this sentence. The future of women working in sports is. Ooh, limitless. We can literally do anything, especially, and I keep bringing it back to the Bucks just because one, that is honestly where I work, but our executive VP, Raven Jemison, is a Black woman. And even a lot of our executive leadership is women. So we can honestly, we can probably take over sports if we really wanted to. A hundred percent. Did you say Raven? Yes. Yes. Raven, I met her. Actually, I didn't have a chance to meet her, but we were at a summit together, uh, the She Believes Summit. And she, I was like, oh. Woo, she is fantastic. And then just everybody there that I met, I was like, oh, we could just run the world. Like, right. This group of women were incredible. Right. Alice, they should be scared. They should be scared. <laughs> I love it. Alice, you are incredible. This interview is incredible. So inspiring. I know it's going to be a popular episode. If people want to get in touch with you, tell us how they can go about doing that. Ooh, you can find me in two places that I always am. So one is Instagram. My Instagram is Hollis C. Brown, H-O-L-L-I-S-C-B-R-O-W-N, or by LinkedIn, which that one is Hollis Brown, I think. So again, H-O-L-L-I-S-B-R-O-W-N. And I respond pretty quickly. And if I don't respond quickly, I'm sorry. It's just because I got a little busy, but I will get back to you. One person, I think I got back to her in like six months and she was so surprised that I responded. And I was like, I'm coming. You just got to give me a moment, but I see you. I will be, I will be there. (laughs) Yes. Yes. And I think people have patience on LinkedIn. Like I did that to a a potential client. It was like three months and she was Mm -hmm. like, Hey, 
hey, I'm so glad to hear from you. I'm still interested. I was like, oh, I thought you'd be mad at me, but she was not. <laughs> she was excited to hear from me and that's it. So yes, patience. Patience is key on LinkedIn. I will link to all that in the show notes. Hollis, thank you so much for being here. This was an absolute pleasure. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And I cannot wait to listen. Hopefully I can make it through because sometimes I don't like hearing my own voice, but I am super (laughs) excited to listen. (laughs) So what did you think of this episode? Do you know another woman who works or is aspiring to work in sports? Would you do me a favor and share this with them? It would mean so much if together we could support and inspire other women on their journey. And let's stay connected. I love meeting and talking to new people. Follow me on Instagram at Jahan Blake and join the free game of her own community by visiting jahanblake.com. I can't wait to meet you.